Hello everyone and welcome back to another Apostles of Muchinjukwa podcast. Thank you so much for engaging with us and interacting. We appreciate your comments and your feedback and we hope that you know we're continuing this journey together with us and we're helping you to give you that valuable insight into Masowe so that you can better understand yourselves and make up your own conclusions instead of stuff that can be told by other people who might not have experience or have a deep understanding of the religion. So for this week, we're going to be helping to tackle that misconception that Masowe is an uneducated and an unsophisticated, a dirty religion. I want to help people to better to understand this because, you know, when they see Masowe sometimes and they see apostles, they're like, oh, look at the clothes that they're wearing. They're dirty, like the stuff is not ironed, but it's not that it's not that it's not the particular case, you know. Obviously, if you go to Maso, we sit on the ground, unfortunately, and obviously your white garments are going to get dirty. That's what happens when you sit on the ground. But fundamentally, we are told that we should always learn to have like cleanliness about us in everything that we do. We should make sure that we always take care of ourselves and in everything that we do. And Maso, we should not be perceived as a poor religion for it is for us. Like poverty is not special, poverty is not something that humbles us. We think, we believe that poverty is a disease, that like it is the disease of the body and the mind. It is something that is infectious and it affects generations and upon generations. And when we say poverty is not just about the mind and poverty affects so many different other issues and, and, and affects so many different kinds of people. Like as believers and the peoples who pray to God, if our spirit is troubled, then we will not be able to fully communicate with God in the way that prayer was intended to be like. So when you see people and they're struggling so much, it's very hard for them to pray because poverty, you know, upsets your spirit because like we've previously said, you'd be thinking about so many other things. You'd be thinking about your bills. You'd be thinking, what are my kids going to eat? You'd be thinking, how am I going to take my kids to school? Or do they even have any shoes to walk, to, you know, to walk with? And it's one of those issues that it will be a struggle for you in order to pray and to get closer to God. So that's why you see in Masowe, we are like advocates for entrepreneurism. And why we do this was because like the founding father, Baba Joani, when he came and he came with this mission and he told people and he said, I don't want you to be working for other people. Because in order for you to fulfill the works of God and in order to help me with what I have been sent by God in order to do, then you need to learn to have your own things. And he didn't just preach this, but he put it into practice. And in South Africa, he, they were known as the Coston basket makers, where like their skills were so renowned and they were known all over that they were given this title because of how brilliant they were. And even still today, I know that they're still managing, but on a relatively smaller scale. But what Baba Joani was trying to give to us was an example of what, as apostles, we should be trying to achieve. How we should learn to have our own things and how we should learn to manage our own assets as well. We should learn to have our own businesses. Why? Because it gives us that freedom in order to work with God. It gives us that time so that, you know, we're not constrained in order in what we're trying to do. For example, if you go to work and you know you have to work Monday to Friday, but for apostles, our Sabbath is the fr is Friday. So that means it will be hard for you to come on that day or you might only come to Friday churches when like Friday services, when it's like your day off or you request some sort of annual leave, something like that. And so Baba Joanna was saying, but if you have your own businesses, you're the one that, you know, that dictates what you want to do and you do it in your own time and you can manage your time more efficiently as well. So this is just something that we were taught. Another example is by a man who was called um, Baba Mujgiwa. And this was, was also one of like, we'll say maybe like the second founding father within the apostles, the apostles religion. 
and he was the one that got everyone to wear like the white garments so the white garments that you see us wearing today as apostles they do not actually come with baba joani but after baba joani started being sent and he was doing his mission there was also another man that was given like that work the continuation of the works of baba joani and he's the one that came with the white garments and he said and what he was saying that as well as praying i saw uh worship angels that were worshiping and praising the lord and they were wearing this attire that they had and this is this attire that i've told that we have to wear so this is the one when you see that most apostles wear and they wear these white white garments that's he's the one that came with those so he is a very important figure when we talk about the history of masoe and even him as well he also emphasized the point that we should learn to have our own assets we should learn to have that spirit of entrepreneurism and he had his own assets he had his own stands he had you know vehicles everything he had and he made it a point that if we want to be able to continue the works of god then these are the sort of stuff that we need to be able to have so that we can carry on and we can move forward and that is the honest truth because even if you look at Jesus' time, when Jesus was walking and he had the disciples and he told them, he was like, you guys still have to work in order for us to continue the work of God. And unfortunately, we need finances. And at the same time, we need your time as well. But if you guys don't have the basics, necessities in order to live a comfortable life, then you will struggle to accomplish my mission. And to the point where even G Judas was appointed as the treasurer of the you know of the movement so he was the one that would collect and he was the one that would distribute money accordingly so that they'll be able to carry on the works that they needed to do because at the end of the day yes we might want to pray yes we might want to do everything but we still need to eat we still need to have clothes on our back we still need somewhere to sleep so even in the movement of jesus he taught them that you should learn to have these skills so that you are able to move forward with the works of god and in another case he said when even when you hear when he taught them how to pray and he said when he was speaking about our father and he said thy kingdom come so let it be on earth as it is in heaven this is such a powerful statement that so many people don't understand because when we picture heaven even though many of us have not seen it but when we just imagine of heaven and when we hear the the beauty and how it's been described by the prophets and the visionaries of old and young when they spoke of how beautiful heaven is we know that it is a kingdom and it is the kingdom of the highest standard so when we say that we want the kingdom of our god to come down on earth it means we want a kingdom of the highest standard to be on earth so we believe that as apostles and as disciples of christ that you should have a standard that is so high within your life so that your quality of life should be really well so that you are able to carry on that works of god so this is why we encourage the spirit of entrepreneurism in masoe and which is why we rebuke the spirit of poverty poverty is like i've said is it's nothing special for us poverty is a disease because it it stops you from doing so many other things it stops you from reaching out to so many other people and we we have to try our best while we still have time on this earth to reach out to the different people so that they can hear the message of god so just like imagine now because of like technology advances we're able to get our message to so many people in the world and so many people are able to hear and this in part has been able because we have been able to advance and to develop ourselves so we also believe that even as worshippers and as religious people we should also be aiming to advance ourselves so that we're able to carry on the works of god so yeah that's our that's the end of the session for today we hope that this topic has been helping you to better understand Masowe and how in Masowe we should strive in order to have our own assets and to have our own things and how this is mutually beneficial with carrying the work of God that the more resources you have then the greater your ability to actually do the work of God and with that I would like to say thank you for your time and glory be to God.